Well, to discuss the developments of the last 24 hours now, let's bring in uh, Brian Becker, live to us, Foreign Relations Analyst and Director of the Anti-War Answer Coalition. Hi there, Brian. Thanks for being with us. This UN uh, resolution, of course, binding will call on nations to adopt new laws and regulations. Um, what will these be, do you think? When are we going to see the start of it? Well, I, I mean, in the case of the United States, the United States has been arresting people for the last 15 years on the basis that they were somehow connected to foreign terrorist uh, operations. Many of them were just uh, set up by the FBI so that they could have big press conferences. I think the resolution actually will be quite meaningless, at least uh, in terms of understanding what's the cause of the rise of Islamic extremism or Islamic State, so-called Islamic State in Syria. That's the consequence, not really of foreign fighters flowing into Syria so much, even though that's happening. The real reason is Iraq has been fractured and Syria has been fractured and Libya has been fractured as a matter of U.S. Uh, foreign policy, a deliberate calculating military policy that created the space for this. And, and this will only escalate the cycle of violence when the U.S. now starts to say that they have the right to bomb Syria over and over again for a matter of years. That will not stop. Uh, the increase of terrorism that will lead to an escalating cycle of violence that's inevitable yeah but of course when you've got a frightened public back in the west because they're basically uh, sold that isis is, is is the very devil and they should be afraid on, on their very street corners of having their heads chopped off but back at home same thing for americans americans your average person at home in the west america is going to go yes great they're doing something about it i mean you can't knock that can you well, yeah, fear is a very powerful political mobilizer. I mean, that's what Bush tried to do, Bush and Cheney, when they tried to uh, present uh, Saddam as the greatest menace in, in world history and as a, one armed with uh, uh, nuclear weapons or chemical weapons or biological weapons. The fact of the matter is, though, that if the U.S. really wanted to fight the Islamic State, they should join forces with the Syrian government, which has done all the bulk of the fighting against these uh, armed opposition groups who in, really are fighting with U.S. weapons, fighting with the money that's been supplied to it by Turkey and Qatar and Saudi Arabia, the principal allies of the United States. So if the United States was genuine about stopping terrorism in Syria, they should take up the Syrian government's offer and, or, and or, uh, offer a united front. But they won't do that because the real goal still is to overthrow the independent nationalist Assad government in Damascus. At the moment, this draft resolution doesn't give any mandate for military force. Where do you think Britain's going to go on it come Friday? Well, Britain, of course, is hampered a little bit because the opposition from the British people stopped in a sort of very historic way, Britain from joining uh, the United States in the anticipated bombing of Syria last August and September, uh, that still weighs heavily on the Cameroon government. Uh, but of course, the growing trend right now amongst all the Western powers, the NATO powers, is to join in. The United States, through the exercise of its undoubted military supremacy, is realigning or disciplining the old alliances. And I think uh, you'll see the you'll see UK joining in, even though. The people in the UK don't want this. All right, Brian Becker from the uh, Answer Anti-War Coalition. Thanks for your thoughts.